what is a vowel or a consonant? So people usually say, oh, English has 21 con consonants and five vowels. There are 26 letters in the English alphabet. And, um, and if you want to know which are which, it's easier to, to know which ones are the vowels. And then everything else would be a consonant. And we are told in school that A, E, I, O, U are the vowels in the English language. And um, isn't that easy? Because now we know that these are vowels. But um, usually easy things are not accurate because when we have this approach that these letters of the alphabet are vowels, when we say that, what we mean is not that these letters per se are vowels. What we mean is that they stand for vowels or they represent vowels. For example, when we have these words, um, bat, bet, bit, bot, and but, we are using vowels here. Each of those symbols stand for one of these vowels. There is a letter, it stands for this. This letter stands for this vowel, and then so on and so forth. Because we know that, for example, in the word about, the same letter stands for a different vowel. It means that in this case, at least the symbol A is standing for two vowels, A and A. There is a more elaborate discussion of this in uh, our other videos and also on our Instagram page. We consistently post images in which there are words and uh, we transcribe the vowels or the words in the IPA. These letters stand for vowel and there is not a one-to-one -one correspondence between the letters and the actual sounds that are called vowels. These symbols, which are IPA symbols, this alphabet is so that every symbol stands for a particular sound. Therefore, you could safely say there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between every symbol in the IPA. There's also the fact that what we call consonants in English, for example, in the word Y, in the word yes, is a consonant, but in the word IC or the word encyclopedia, they're vowels. Then the question is, oh, do we have more than five vowels in English then? Uh, when you say vowels in the orthographic use, you're talking about letters which have to do with writing. But vowels in linguistics have to do with the sounds themselves, not with the writing system. The focus must be speech, not writing. I just showed you an example of, oh, there could be more than five vowels. The fact is that depending on the regional variety of English, there are approximately 20 vowels used in, in the English language. Therefore, you can see from this that the, the orthographic use or the orthographic approach is not very accurate. And of course, when we talk about 20 vowels, we talk about monophthongs and diphthongs. This was the orthographic usage of the word vowel. We're going to move on to a more accurate method, and that is called the utterance usage. In the utterance usage, the way you, they define vowels and consonants is that vowels are the sounds that can be pronounced by themselves. For example, e, 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 a. So you can just pronounce them. But consonants are those sounds that not that cannot be pronounced by themselves. For example, the sound p. When you say p, I'm adding a vowel to the consonant because by itself you cannot say p you need a vowel to follow it so that you can say it the same is true about b so you cannot just say b. you need to release you need to add a vowel to it you can say b but you cannot say b. you cannot release the sound these sounds that cannot be pronounced by themselves are called consonants while this may seem to be true in the case of sounds like pa, ba, da, ta, ka, it is not true of other sounds that are also consonants, but can indeed be pronounced by themselves. For example, the sound sa, you can just say sa without using any vowel. You can continuously say z, sh, z. These consonants, which happen to be fricatives in these cases, 
can be pronounced by themselves without the help of a vowel. Well, you can even pronounce the nasal consonant ma without any vowel. You can continuously say mm. Again, we don't need a vowel to pronounce that, but still it's a consonant. Therefore, consonants are, they seem to be at least two groups themselves. Some of them need a vowel to be pronounced and some of them do not. Therefore, the utterance usage is not accurate. It seems to be more accurate than the orthographic usage because the emphasis shifts from writing to speech utterance, but it's not accurate enough because it doesn't account for consonants that can be pronounced by themselves. The phonetic and phonological usage. According to this usage, speech sounds are articulated with a relatively free flow of air through the mouth, a relatively free. If the air flow remains smooth and does not become turbulent, one utters vowels. If one va narrows the oral cavity by moving the tongue towards the roof of the mouth and perhaps using other articulators, airflow is likely to become turbulent or blocked altogether for a while before release are called consonants. Vowels are uttered with a free passage of air. In other words, for consonants, we have some sort of stricture. In vowels, no stricture. And then this, this can be a basis for understanding the different kinds of consonant that we mentioned in the utterance usage. The consonants that need a vowel to be able to be pronounced, like pataka. So they have a total blockage and stricture with a sudden release, which has to be a vowel. But then there's other consonants which have less stricture and they can be continuously pronounced by themselves. For example, the fricative sh. Now let's give some context to the phonological approach. So we have phonetic, phonological. In the phonological approach, sounds come in units that are called syllables. What is a syllable? A syllable is a unit, a unit of phonological organization. It has a central component and it has optional components before the central compo component and after compo the component. The central component of a syllable is called a nucleus. And then it can be optionally preceded by another component, which is called the onset. And it can be optionally followed by yet another component, which is called a coda. Every syllable has a nucleus. And this nucleus is sonorant, which means it has inherent loudness and is clearly perceptible. A vowel is a sound that occupies the nucleus of a syllable and is produced with a stricture of open approximation. And consonant is a sound that is produced with a degree of a stricture, complete, close, or open approximation. Consonants usually occupy the position of onset and coda, while vowels occupy the head, nucleus position of the syllable. Depending on the language involved, there are certain constraints as to how syllables can be structured. The onset, for example, in English, you have words that begin with st or sl, like st, like stack, sl, like slow. You have um, tr, like translator. You have br, like a broom, right? So in English, you have these, but for example, you don't have tl, but they are allowed in other languages. For example, in one of my favorite languages, which is Nahuatl, you have words with tl, right? In this syllable, part of the structure, the, the onset is tla. There's an indigenous group called Tlingit. This is indigenous people near Alaska. And they're called Tlingit, but in English, they usually call them Klingit. And why does that happen? Like in pronunciation, why does this uh, tla become kla? Because in English, kla is al allowed, but the coda tla is not allowed. So we mentioned the ph phonetic and phonological approach to the study of vowels and consonants. There is an overlap between the two approaches. In the phonological approach, which is based on syllable structure, focuses on syllable structure, the sounds of wa and ya are clearly consonants because they do not appear in the nucleus. They only appear in the onset or coda. For example, in the word went or the word yacht, they, they appear here. They appear in the onset. 
Therefore, because they cannot appear in the nucleus, they cannot be vowels. However, according to the phonetic definition, which has to do with their articulatory phonetics, they are pronounced with a free passage of air and no turbulence. Because this is a combination of the phonetic and phonological approach, that's why these sounds are called semi-vowels, or even in older times they were called semi-consonants, because they can act both as a vowel and as a consonant, apparently. Here, we said that the nucleus is normally a vowel. What does that even mean? Does it mean that it can be a consonant? Last but not least in this discussion, if you stick to English, there are certain sounds in English that can actually function like the nucleus. For example, the sound L in the word light is obviously an onset and in the word bell it's a coda. However, in the word bottle, here you have ba and a bottle, bottle. So where's the vowel here? The T is onset, but where is the nucleus? Here, the sound L is the nucleus. Or, for example, also N in the word button. In the word button, the sound N is the nucleus, button. Human speech can be seen in a continuum of most consonantal to most vowel-like sounds. So. Um, you need to know that uh, if you want to delve more deeply into these topics, you will see that there is a degree of how consonantal or vowel-like sounds are. So, and then the most consonantal on the one end and the most vowel-like on the other end, but then there are other sounds in between.